Hi, I'm Matt Hayes and this guy here is my fishing partner Mick Brown and you're very welcome to Wet Nets. Another one of our fishing adventures unfolds and we've come here today to one of the jewels in the English crown of rivers. This is the River Windrush in Oxfordshire near the busy market town of Whitney and the Windrush has made its way down here by winding its way through the Cotswold countryside. Now this is a very exciting river to fish. There's adventure around every nook and cranny and bend but it's not going to be a pushover and we're really going to be put to the test. But Mick, we've gone a couple of days. I can think of worse ways to uh, spend mm, some time. Certainly. Just down here, mate, there's a cracking chub swim under this tree. We've got to creep into position, but it's worth you having a cast there before we move down. I've already seen it. Well, Mick's just creeping into position, and he's going to try and catch one of the chub in this swim. It won't be easy because of the bright, clear weather, but he's positioned himself nicely uh, down behind that bed of nettles, so he's making good use of the cover. And uh, for bait, he's got a bit of sweet corn. We've flicked a couple of grains in already. If you use very small baits here, unless they're moving, they do tend to get nailed by the minnows. So a big bait's a good idea, and, and corn is tough enough to withstand the attentions of the minnows. Just see a little bit of corn going in now. And I think where Mick has got to put his bait is tight against the far side because any chub in the swim will probably live under the roots of the trees on the far bank. Now it's all about the cast. You can't have too many casts in a swim like this. You'll spook the fish, so he's got to get it right pretty quickly. And he's hung it up the tree. That is a disaster. Now he's got to try and get his bait back out of the tree without disturbing the fish. <laughs> well, it looks like an early disaster for Mick Brown. <laughs> now he's got to get back out of the swim and retackle before he can start again. But I don't think he's spooked the fish. <laughs> well, Mick's just retackled. He's got another rig on and he's ready for another go. It's a little bit like the Olympics here, really. Just because you hit the bar on your first jump doesn't mean to say you can't have another one. But Mick knows that he's actually diminished his chances of catching a fish by doing that. So he's rested the swim for 10 minutes and now he's going to make another cast. Well, he's really going for this one. He's taking his glasses off. He means business. Here we go. Oh, it's perfect. He's got it dead right this time. That's lovely. Yes, something good, lad. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> well done, Mick. Still got the old skills, Matt. <laughs> Great stuff. The stalking skills you learn as a kid, they, they never leave you, do they? It was lovely. I actually saw that bite from right back up there. That Scopex flavoured corn did the business. Well, did, what was happening was I'd, I'd gone lighter and lighter with the weight until I could get the bait moving across the gravel nicely. Oh, well done, Mick. <laughs> Fantastic. In clear water like this chalk stream we've got here, look how golden the chub scales are. Yeah, it's yeah, almost yeah. like a suntan. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Fabulous fish. Like at the end, the gold on the uh, gilt cover there as well. Beautiful. Well, we'll put this one back in the net, Mick. It's a nice way of doing it. Just put the fish in the net, allow it to turn over, which it has, and then literally by lowering the front of the net, eventually you can persuade the chub to swim out and off into this gorgeous clear water. <laughs> he doesn't want to go, look. <laughs> And there he goes, back to the tree. Yeah, back to his brothers. Now, of course, Mick, if you were going to fish on here, I wouldn't recommend putting the chub no, back in the no. same spot, but it's such a small swim, I don't think it'll stand two fish in a row. Yeah. You could bait up and come back later, but there's some cracking swims downstream. We might as well go and have a look at them. Well, certainly, yeah. Well, that was a good start, mate. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Well it's done. nice to get a fish on your first try, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. But Set drop for the day. There's just so many swims, Mick. I mean, literally round every bend. 
there's a new swim and this river just twists and turns its way down through the countryside just for miles and miles and there's so many good swims but what I thought about next was maybe trying to spot a pole fishing. Really? Yeah, it's quite successful pole on here. Pole fishing on a little river? Yeah. Basically, to fish the pole, you just simply plug it together and push the rig across the river until you get to the desired length. One more section should do it. There we go. Now, with this long pole, I can literally lower the bait exactly where I want it. So it's very, very accurate. There goes the float, look, can you see it? Oh, that's a bite straight away, I don't believe it. Oh, I'm into a bit of a zoo creature here by the look of it. Look at the pole go, look at the elastic. Now the idea when you're playing a fish on the pole is to try and keep above it, allow it to plough around and let the elastic do the work and then gradually unship sections of the pole as you get the fish nearer. I'm trying to keep him out of the middle of the river because I know that there's a weed bed down there. Look at him go. Good fish. Now if the fish makes a sudden dart for freedom I can add sections of the pole back on but I'm just going to unship and risk netting the fish. There it is. It's a lovely chub. Normally once you get the head up they're uh, they're as good as yours. Well that was unbelievable. I, I fed the swim up and uh, I put the float in, it just settled and straight down. Incredible. <laughs> Didn't expect to start like that I'll tell you. Smashing fish. Wonderful fish that clonker. Well, much as Mick and I both love fishing, there are limits, eh, hey, mate? Well, I've had enough, Matt, I tell you. Can you sum up these conditions in one word, Brownie? I don't think they could use it. How about pants? <laughs> this weather is pants, and uh, we're just approaching the best time of the day, which is dusk. But this is soul-sapping stuff. I think what we'll do is we'll go back, we'll have a nice cup of tea, yeah. something to eat, and uh, we'll have another go tomorrow. Yeah. Perfect day ruined. Well, day two and uh, after getting literally rained off the water last night and it rained and rained and rained after we left. As you'd expect, the river's come up this morning, Mick. It's looking a little bit coloured. Um, but we're going to give it a go with these plugs. Now, a lot of people would be surprised at the choice of using lures on a river like this one for species other than pike, but how do you rate our chances? Well, I think very good, and, and the main, well, there's two reasons. First of all, I know, and you know, that chub take plugs. And secondly, I don't think anybody else does it here, so the game's wide open to us. Well, this is amazing. I've just, just tossed a plug into this swim, the first cast of the day. <laughs> and I've actually hooked a fish. And the reason I'm fishing here, I saw something splashing last night. And I'm playing it carefully because I know it's a trout. And I thought it was a trout that was splashing about last night. And it's quite a nice one and quite a rare fish in the river. And I'm, Whether I can actually get it in, I don't know. I haven't got my landing net with me. I've got it and... Yes, 
it's a magnificent brown trout and I am so surprised and so pleased to catch this fish. These are very very rare fish in the river and you can see it's a really wild fish, lovely spots, great big mouth and luckily it's only lightly hooked and I want to get it straight back in the river, back where it belongs. That really is a magnificent example of a wild brown trout. It's very, very difficult to return the fish. There's a, it's very deep in amongst these reeds. But I'm sure this trout will find its way back. If I can just get it over the edge there. And there she goes. Probably never to be seen or caught again. Well, I do fancy this spot on this bend. Now I'm just going to creep into position and try a few casts around the general area, but you might be interested in the choice of lure because I'm told it's a crawdad pattern. It's a little bit like a crayfish, and there are crayfish in this river. The reason I've chosen this plug is because it's got a lovely yellow and orange belly, which is exactly what the minnows have got in this river, and I'm pretty sure that that's what the perch and the chub are used to feeding on. into something that's really stuck hard on the bottom here but I can feel it moving it may be a chub actually yeah it is a chub whoa these little right rods are brilliant fun but <laughs> oh I'm in trouble here now can I get the fish out that's the question oh he's right under that raft of weed I can see the fish he's just on the surface he's buried his head in typical chub-like fashion, right under the rushes there. There he is. Can you see him? Typical chub, straight for the weed. You can see the plug just outside his mouth well, there. Well, I'm probably so going to snag up, but I'll, I'll take a chance. We don't want to lose the fish to him. I think you might yeah, have it there, my boy. I can just give it a shot. So I guess well done, Mick. Yeah. Well, would you believe... It's a nice job, isn't it? ...catching a chub like that on a plug, which will surprise a lot of people, but also with the amount of colour in the water, Mick. It rained cats and dogs last night, which is yeah. par for the course on wet nets, but... Uh, but I mean, the choice of the lure is important, isn't it? I there mean, that's go. got a lot of vibration, that lure. There's the... Uh, oh, that's it. Yeah. Well, how about that, Mick? Chub on a plug. <laughs> Great way of catching them, isn't it? Fantastic way to catch them. And on this light tackle, brilliant fun. Lots of species of fish in rivers will actually accept artificial lures. And Mick, you've done loads of chub fishing, particularly over the years, and I know that you've brought along with you some of your favourite chub plugs. Just take us through um, how these plugs work and, and what your favourites right. are. Right. Well, these are my favourites for small rivers, and uh, in particular, you'll notice the general size is about two to three inches, and I do tend to favour these fat-bodied types, especially if they've got a rattle inside. It just seems that that, that tight, wobbling action and the rattle just seems to draw the chub in. I've also done very well on these banana or curve shaped lures like the lazy eye or the head and tadpole. They're very very good for chub and then of course to take a chub off the surface to me in a river is the ultimate prize and the one lure that stands out above all the surface lures for taking chub in little rivers is the jitterbug and to see the chub's white lips come and rip that lure off the surface I mean that is the ultimate prize for the, the lure fisherman. That's Sounds absolutely yeah. fantastic Mick and it of course is. We do both love plug fishing, but we have got another method at our disposal, and we're we talking have. here about using new technology. Now, these soft plastic baits have been brought across from Scandinavia and the United States, and we've got two different types here. These very small shads resemble fish in shape. They're very, very effective, and so too are these worm-type baits, plastic worms that look like, well, worms really, but I suppose they could be leeches. And the idea is to fish them on one of these weighted jig heads. Now when you do that, the bait gets dragged down to the bottom and it's fished back in little erratic sweeps. When that happens, the tail of the lure vibrates very, very quickly and it is very attractive to any fish in the area. Well, I'm going to give one of the plastic baits a go. This is a nice fishy looking bend. The river comes round from the left, hard right in a big hairpin. And of course what will have happened is the flow will pick up pace towards the outside of the bend and it will scour out a bit of a trough, so it's 
quite a nice fish holding area. Now you might be able to see how I'm fishing the jig. Basically the idea is to fish it back in sweeps or hops, but probably one of the most effective ways is just to jiggle the end of the rod and bring it back, just picking up line after you've jiggled it. And you can vary the size of the sweeps. You can bring it up three or four feet off the bottom and let it sink. Another three or four feet off the bottom and let it sink. Or you can just jiggle it around a bit. Oh, there's a bite. Almost under my rod tip. Which just goes to show that these rubber baits really do work. There you go. Not the biggest pike in the world. <laughs> In fact, he might just be the smallest. But there's the lure look. Now, I've rigged up this little shad on a jig head with a rattle attached to it. So, not only is the tail vibrating, but when I twitch the bait back, the jig is rattling as well. All these fish are terrific sport on this very light tackle. That is a beautiful little pike. And when he's bigger, he'll be quite a fearsome predator. He's got a lovely broad, blunt snout. A perfectly marked pike, he's absolutely exquisite. And at this size, of course, he's on a very, very fast growth curve. So I would imagine that there's already a few minnows disappeared down that moor today. And he couldn't resist just one more meal. Well, one of the nicest ways to tackle a small river is to float fish. And Mick and I have now changed tactics again. We're going to try our hand at some float fishing. I'm really hoping in this particular session I can contact a dace or two. And the stick float is absolutely ideal for running the bait down this nice smooth glide. You can let it go maybe 30 or 40 yards if you want to. And you can stand here and trot the float down the run for quite some distance, presenting a moving bait to any fish in the swim. It's absolutely lovely. fish of the session here and that's a cracking dace a really nice fish actually it may not appear to be a, a huge fish but in fact for a dace this is pretty big it probably weighs about five or six ounces the national record for dace is about a pound and a quarter they look rather like fairly small chub but um, they've got very very silvery scales dace more so than a chub and if you check out the fin here this is the anal fin, and on a dace, the anal fin is concave. In other words, it curves inwards. You can also tell because of the mouth. The mouth on the dace is much smaller and more delicate than the chub. Um, they're known as the silver dart by those who really admire them. And a dace trotting for days, if you can get in a good shoal, is really something to behold. It's fabulous light tackle fishing. Ooh, yeah, that was a nice bite right down by that tree. And I often think, you know, if the dace could grow to several pounds in size, you'd be really hard pushed to, to actually land them because they twist and turn and duck and weave in the current. They use every ounce of their strength in the fight. Oh, some lovely dace in this swim. It's a beautiful, wiry fish, the dace. I absolutely adore catching dace. It's one of those fish that you associate with so many wonderful autumn and winter sessions. And you know, the dace is very much a fish of fast flowing, pacey water. And that's why the river Windrush here has some of the biggest dace in the country.
Well, that was a cracking bite. It nearly pulled me off my perch. <laughs> well, this one feels a really nice one. He's trying to get back under that raft, trying to ease him away from it. I'm going to get him upstream, get him to slide back into the net, and he's in. Oh, it's a lovely job. Oh. That's a really big fat chub. Look at the barrel shaped chest on him. He's obviously been feeding up at some time. That is a really lovely chub. The sort of chub that makes the weight worthwhile. That is a fabulous fish. Look at that, as long as a man's arm. fish just switched over to a big worm because I've been plagued by minnows and I'm into another zoo creature here. It's a barbel me. Well look at that. They are very very rare on the windrush I'll tell you, extremely rare particularly on this part and it's a barbel. Well I can see your worm on his nose there. Yeah. Just keep him coming this way. He's coming. Keep him coming. Yes, we've got him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good lad. Whoa, yes. what a result. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Can you believe it? That is a real turn up for the books. We've got a river windrush barbel and on the pole as well. Well, Mick, that's fantastic. You only just got it. The hook's virtually fallen out. Well, in actual fact, these fish made their way into the windrush out of the River Thames. They're very, very rare in this river. It's the first one I've ever caught. And I think that is a fabulous note to end this show on. We've really shown you some variety of fishing, a variety of species. We've caught fish on all methods. And now we've crowned it off with a barbel on the pole. That's all we've got time for in this particular episode of Wet Nets. But we'll see you again when we'll be on another one of our fishing adventures. See ya.